So why don't you tell me about, let's see, Jacob's Pillow. Oh, God. Oh, yuck. Jacob's Pillow. Jacob's Pillow is, was a dance camp that I went to when I was 17, graduated from high school. It was in Lee, Massachusetts, which is this little shithole town in Massachusetts, outside of Springfield. Way outside of Springfield. <laughs> uh -huh. There was the main lodge, a couple of dance studios. They were all like log places. A place that looked like a barn that was the theater. And then cabins that we all lived in. There was no heat in those cabins. <clears throat> Which shouldn't have been a factor because it was summer. Except we were up in the Peekskill Mountains. So by August it was getting cold. So you wake up in the morning you could see your breath. It was cold. But by noon it had warmed up. It was a lot of fun. And it was pretty crazy. There were a lot of different dance instructors. We had a dance instructor from India. He was a skinny little Indian guy who taught us how to dance like Indians from India. Katri Mukaha! <laughs> and he was obsessed about his weight. <laughs> yeah. It was very interesting. And uh, then there was a modern dancer. Well, the camp was run by Ted Shaw, who was a modern dancer and had danced with Martha Graham. You guys don't know anything about these people because it's way before your time. <laughs> Martha Graham was a very famous modern dancer. And Ted Shaw, Ted Shaw and his wife were all part of that group at one time. And then they broke off from Martha Graham and kind of did their own thing. Anyway, so Ted Shaw owned, owned the the dance company, Jacob's Pillow. He owned the camp. Um, so there was modern dancers. Uh, what else? There were ballet dancers. There was an old Russian woman who was who used to dance with the Russian ballet company. I'm not sure. I can't remember which one it was anymore. She was a little tiny woman who was probably as, as round as she was tall. And she could get her foot about this far off the ground. <laughs> but she was a great teacher. And when I went to New York, she was teaching at the Metropolitan Ballet School. So I took classes with her at the Metropolitan Ballet School. She was very good. Anyway. Um, and then we had Maria Tallchief come and dance. And Maria Tallchief was George Balanchine, was a wife of George Balanchine's, one of George Balanchine's wives. Well, she wasn't George Balanchine's wife when she danced at Jacob's Pillow. And she was probably 40 when she danced at Jacob's Pillow, which is way too old to be dancing ballet. Way too old. Well, she was a good dancer. Well, Maria Tallchief went on stage and danced and then she'd go off stage when she get through with whatever she was doing and as she was going off stage you could hear her huffing and puffing and off the side of the stage they had an oxygen tank <laughs> they give her a couple of good slugs of oxygen <laughs> she'd catch her breath you know get reoxygenated and then go back and do some more. <laughs> oh, oh my God, the woman's going to die. <laughs> she never did. <laughs> Kept dancing for a couple more years. 
<laughs> that was pretty shocking. I had never seen that before. <laughs> that was pretty funny. You know, she, she danced with Valerie Roos. Yeah? Monte Carlo. Sure. She danced with a lot of people. She was a good ballet, ballet dancer. American Indian. Native American. Good ballerina. And I don't know what the hell she ever <laughs> George Balanchine for. That guy was so gay. Gay, gay, gay. I don't know what what the hell anybody ever married George Balanchine for. Except that he was, <laughs> he was, you know, a hot shot. And she was just a baby when she married him, so. Anyway. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Anyway, yeah, and some of us would work in the theater doing stage stuff at night. Lights and set design and all sorts of crap. I did lights. We had this famous ballet dancer from Paris. That, that was that danced in the theater at Jacob's Pillow. And he was such a prick. Oh, he was such a prick. Thought he was really wonderful. And he was good. But, but he was really taken with himself. So, so, just to piss him off, when I did lights, I'd take the spotlight, and I, instead of shining it right on him, it just shined it a little off-center. <laughs> it made him crazy. Oh, my God. It made him absolutely crazy. And he'd yell and scream all sorts of shit in French. We all spoke a little bit of French. I knew what he was saying. I knew enough about what he was saying to know he was pissed. <laughs> I didn't care. I kept doing it. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> um, and then there was flamenco dance. Ho, ho, ho! My first big romance. Roberto Jimenez ran a flamenco company with his partner. And they taught us flamenco dance. Ha, ha. Boy, was I hot for him. He looked like Ricardo Montalban. Guys, look up Ricardo Montalban. When he was young, he was a fox. <laughs> Corinthian leather. <laughs> anyway, so I had a I had the hots for him, boy. I tell you, Grandma hated those people. Hated them with a passion. And when I went to New York, I went to New York to meet the flamenco dancer, Roberto Jimenez. He didn't show up. Partner had a heart attack. Oh well. Of course, that wouldn't have worked. He was an old guy and I was just a kid. So I married a different old guy. So I married a different old guy. Your father. <laughs> Salvador. <laughs> Who surprisingly knew him? They knew each other. They'd gone to the conservatory together in Mexico. <laughs> Small world. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. Small world. Six degrees of separation. Is that what they say? That's what they say. <laughs>